Okay, so just a little bit about the process so I can remember what I did. It all started off with a walk or jog around the lake where I picked up a single piece of sycamore bark that looks similar to this. A couple pieces here. Like that. And some of them are curly and curvy. Right. And um, I took the couple pieces and I put them on the windowsill and I started uh, just putting things together. So this is the outcome of that where they got joined together and then polyurethane so they become hard. They're still fragile though. Um, and then after they get put together with glue guns, you see these little um, strings, you can probably barely see them. And they're not, they kind of look like meat on a rack over here. And this is so the, um, you can see all the strings hanging from like a puppeteer strings. They're so the pieces don't touch, so they need to be specially constructed. Uh, then the idea of a base, what kind of base were we going to use? And um, after coming up with a couple ideas, uh, I happened to find this, my grandfather's cyp cypress clock that was in the house and because my parents just moved they were getting rid of a bunch of stuff so I took the um, top layer of polyurethane off of there which took about an hour because it was about a quarter of an inch thick I took the dials off you can see the original hole where the dial was right there right and then we had to create some kind of base for this sculpture as you can see right there that's one side of it and there's the hole right over there where the plug is going to go in. So the base is a more natural, organic base. And then when you tip it up, you can see underneath, there is the beginning of a construction of a light box, which I've already constructed the lights that will go inside of there for uh, the lighting unit, which will, the rods will be, poles will be drawn similar to this, in which uh, rods will come out of the top four foot, six foot, five foot, uh, these pieces will be then strung on the rods or set on the rods by the individuals and then cross rods will go through that. So we're at the point right now where the base is finished, the lighting unit inside is done. Uh, we're taking these pieces that were hanging, I'm touching them up, making sure that they all look, um, you know, they all have an individual sense of being. And then we will rejoin this video for um, the completion of the sculpture which is still yet, you know, I have an idea or a concept, but it's not, you know, it's not in stone. So we'll see what happens. That's the exciting part.
I decided instead of taking and having people take a piece from your that we sent you and reassemble reassemble this here, I thought this would be ideal to assemble the sculpture here, meaning that it's never been put together before. I haven't put it together before. So this is the first time in public, like the first time in public they are coming together, that we'll be putting, uh, I guess met metaphorically, putting their lives and our lives together. In doing so, we're doing it in a sculpture right here. So I'm kind of excited to see exactly how it's going to come out, because I'm not sure. So just a little bit of the component components that really went into the piece. For me, part of the criteria was that the pieces that we put together should be unique and individual. So you can see that the bark that's put together all becomes like individual little sculptures of like we are unique as people. No two pieces are the same. Um, they're sensitive, meaning that you may break these as you put these on these rods, and that's fine. Uh, the sensitivity comes in that I think that all relationships are very fragile, and that you need to care for them, and we need to care for each other. So if they may break, like our relationships break at times, and that's fine, so don't get worried if you slide it on the cracks and it falls apart. It's supposed to do that, because that's what life does for us also. Um, it's also uh, a very much so about the collective significance of this piece, meaning that we're all obviously here because we contribute, we are contributing through the fabric interwoven into each other's lives as well as into your life now. And that means that every person here is, uh, will fit together on the sculpture to be a collective. What should I say about that? I can probably read it better. <laughs> um, you know, yeah, are you glad that we did this before wine? <laughs> <laughs> what I wrote was, while individually unique and complete, put together becomes neither greater expression of the individual parts, a collective energy. Um, the rods represent for me, as I was thinking, what these things, because, you know, part of the, you know, getting this together is like, how do you take a piece of art and break it apart or cut it apart or put it back together or reassemble it, so I thought that they needed to go on something. So I thought of these wonderful uh, loose rods that kind of represent to me, um, you know, the strength and integrity and truth and the things in which we should, our soul should reside on. So, and then of course the light going through always represents truth and the situation. Um, uh, you know, it's funny, I can talk for two hours in lecture. <laughs> I'm, yeah. I'm a professor and I'm, I'm, I'm mumbling my words today. And I'm, I'm not sure why, probably because I think it's so important. I guess. Um, Patrick's uh, kind of like decode what I This is my job. That's what I do. That's what we do to each other. I don't know what happened and he decodes it. Um, what I will explain before he decodes what I just said. Whatever, is that uh, we have pieces over here labeled for the parents, siblings, and Lauren and Shaw. Um, we're not excluding the siblings' mate in this, but we felt that this center rod should represent a very strong family ties, you know, with each individual family. There is not a significant order. In other words, we're starting with. Uncle Dick being first, but that doesn't mean that he's a priority. Just it's just that they have to go on here somehow, so we have to start with somebody, someplace. So he's the first one to go on there. I'm glad I smoked the one. The one in the center, the ones that go in the center column for the family do interlock, so they have a number order, and they, they're interlocking in a special significance. Uh, all the ones around here are for all the other attendants of the wedding, myself and Patrick included. And what I'm, I'm, what I'm going to have you do, and we're done doing our thing, is when we're ready to assemble this, <laughs> <laughs> is you're going to pick out one of these pieces that you feel best represents you. And I think the best way to do that is just walk over to the table and pick out the first one that you see, because it's usually the best indication you know, of what we intuitively see. Um, and then you're going to notice that there's a significant common factor on these is they, they have an opening, and that's where the, the bark actually formed that opening itself, which I based that idea on how would the rod was, how this would fit on the rod. So you would want to like take that, and whatever way you put it on there, remember this is significant to your relationship with them, so you're fitting this 
in with their lives and with the other people connected and collectively. So whatever way you put that on there is entirely up to you. Okay? Patrick? Decoding, starting now. Um, so the, the real significance is this of how a relationship is built. You know, I there's no mystery that I, I love my Lauren. I love the dad. I love Chell too. I think they are absolutely perfect for each other. Here she goes. I'm sorry, don't do that. Don't do that. No. I love her. Um, We've had, yeah, and she starts, look, don't you start too. No, I'm cutting in ring going on. Um, Thanks, so, guys. But the, the problem with relationships that all of us know that have been in long term relationships is that you just don't marry that person, you marry the family, you marry the friends. And honestly, you know, from my experience, that's who make me up. You know, all of my family and my friends have had a huge impact on my life. So, I would say the same for Lauren and Chal. Um, and that would be my suggestion is for, I, and I think, you know, like Richard and I, you know, the is the ego, I think Lauren and Chal complement each other very well. As long as, you know, Lauren puts up with Chal's problems, which he does really like to talk about. So he does. He really does. All the time. Let me show you this. No, Chal, I don't want to see. Really. <laughs> So that's really the basis of this, that our, our whole team is family, um, and the title of Love's Life, the, the life of love. So that's where the, the family part comes in, to bring the truth to the love through life. Um, so I'm going to step back, Richard. Um, so you want to just start with where you're from? What I'd like to do is have the The parents in the bride and groom, and the siblings. That's us.
Thank you. 